Hello, everyone. We are ready to start very soon. Uh, thank you to, to tell me where you're joining from. I'm very happy to, to welcome you all to this webinar. There were 80 persons who voted on uh, food safety culture webinar as the next topic for us. Uh, but we are more than 460 people uh, subscribed to this webinar. So let's see how many, how many join. So hello, Justice from South Africa. Hello, online from Cape Verde. Lydia from Mexico. Welcome. I see that YouTube and LinkedIn is working. Great to have you here. The UK is here, Portugal, the United States. Hi, Gregoire. Spain. So this is starting to be an international webinar indeed. We'll start at, uh, at four. From India, hello, Siamlin. Hello, Brazil. Hello, Bocu from Istanbul. Spain is also here with Antonia, Maria, welcome. And from Maria from Murcia. Mariana from Portugal, hello, welcome. Mexico. We're just missing someone from from Asia. Well, India. India is there. The Netherlands. Hello, Bastian. Hello, Brigitte. So are you ready to, to go in two minutes? Hello, Adrian, welcome. Oh, the first one from, uh, from France, welcome. Joseph Ernest. And from Vietnam, Chan Chuk. Chuk, welcome. Thank you. So, we'll start very soon. Thank you. Hello, David. Hola, David. Seems that uh, Spain, Spain is very uh, present. Great. Oh, we have uh, someone from California. Welcome. All right. Then let's start. Welcome everyone. So we are um, here to, to speak about food safety culture. And I will start right away. So 
why are you so interested in uh, talking about food safety culture? Why are we here? First, uh, let me give you some um, some uh, information about myself. So I am a Bruno Seche, I'm veterinarian, uh, international food integrity consultant. I have 27 years uh, of experience in um, food safety. And um, I have been um, working uh, in a major company, international company, cheese company, French cheese company called Bell. Then I had the chance uh, to participate in the IFS, International Future Standard, during two years before um, founding Integralim, this consulting company I'm working for. Today I'm an IFS recognized consultant, IFS Academy, and also FSC 22,000 lead auditor, according to the last version. Again, why are we talking about food safety culture? It is very important to understand that food safety culture first is about people. And I would say it's about first them. Their names are Nolan, Amy, Natasha, Mohamed, Anna, and uh, these kids have all one thing in common, is that they all died because of food intoxication, allergy, uh, E. coli, steak. And I think that these faces are important because this is why uh, we need to improve all what we do in terms of food safety. Of course, the numbers are also important, but they are less impactful than the faces. The WHO uh, published some years ago already um, an evaluation of the burden of food, foodborne disease. And it is substantial. Every year, one in 10 persons falls ill. There are four 20,000 deaths, and one third of them are children. So, food safety is important, and food safety culture, we say it's about people, it's also about general management and leadership. And it really starts there. An important aspect of it is to walk the talk. I think it's a very interesting expression. And I want to give you an example of what food safety culture isn't and food safety culture is. This is, um, these are some pictures uh, I took from uh, two French uh, national programs showing uh, on one side, uh, a general manager visiting uh, his company with a journalist and on the other side another general manager presenting um, some developments in the cheese factory so you see both are in the dairy industry but you will notice that there is a big difference in how they present themselves and if you wonder about uh, the gentleman who, whose face i I masked. Um, he was really uh, in the factory. It was not a, a scene. So uh, in, in the movie uh, and, and the, in, the, um, in the report, you could see him walk through uh, the factory and meeting uh, some employees who were uh, correctly dressed. What general management needs to understand, and uh, I, I like to quote Peter Drucker there, adapting a little bit, is that food safety culture, it's strategy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can have the best strategic plan for your products, for your brand, if you don't have as basis food safety, then these dreams, this strategy, or this strategy will be only dreams, uh, because all what you have uh, built upon can fall down from one moment to another when you are faced to a crisis. And 
I think that sometimes we consider that food safety is a given, is a basic. So we do not uh, pay too much attention or enough attention on it. What general management should understand is that food safety culture is also about listening to all signs and also to the weak signs in the company, being aware of what's happening. Most of us know that food safety issues are never the result of bad luck and happening without warning. They are always these um, weak signals that we have. We know that we have some issues here or there. We know uh, that maybe this uh, workshop is not the best and we are waiting uh, before we invest uh, in, and uh, to improve it. We fix uh, quickly some things, uh, indeed waiting for, for enough resources. So we need to be aware that these um, weak signals exist and we need to look for them if you want to um, address food safety on a global scale and a fully full scale. But food safety is also about how we prepare, we are prepare, prepared, should I say, and how we react to um, some situations. You may have noticed uh, from the current crisis that we are um, living all together, maybe for the first time in for one of the of the first time at least that we can remember um, ourselves uh, of this world crisis. Uh, what makes the crisis is not the event, it's not even the pandemic, but it's how we react to it and, and why we have to react to it like that. And is it lack of preparation? Um, is it lack of resources? Uh, it's difficult to tell depending on the on the countries, but for sure the crisis is more the lockdown and the economical um, results of it on top of all the, the death people. And why do we have to be locked, locked down is because we do not have enough um, beds in our hospitals to reanimate and to help the, the ill persons, you know, the, the sick. Uh, so we need to be prepared um to the different events and to be prepared to react M meaning that uh, in order to be prepared we need to work together it's not so much about ha having the best procedures but rather how to uh, be able to um to work together and and, and work on this resilience um to uh, get better uh during the crisis uh, to address the right issues um, and then to, to, to survive the, the potential crisis. Another aspect which is important, uh, in my opinion, is uh, indeed uh, about supply chain. And that's why I've said it's also about knowing your supplier's first name. Okay, maybe not the first name, but at least where uh, he is from, the country is from. As we all know, uh, the global supply chain we are um, facing um, has a, a lot of repercussions. And in every um, big food safety related crisis, uh, we notice how uh, weak we are or, uh, and how little we know the supply chain. You may know, for all, all of you, uh, who are uh, in the food uh, food industry and food safety that we are facing uh, uh, a world uh, a, cr a big crisis sorry um, about sesame seeds uh, and this shows um, in, in the in the the time that we we take uh, to to react uh, we are we are now for for several months uh, having recalls all over uh, Europe. Uh, because of uh, of these sesame uh, seeds from India, and uh, that's why we need to know better, and we need to invest in um, in knowing better uh, the supply chain. I know that also with the the COVID situation, there are also uh, thoughts about how to maybe source uh, some items more locally. But I think the most important is really knowing where it comes from, and uh, having a direct link to uh, your suppliers.
So um, I mentioned it, it's also about adapting needed resources. I talked about these uh, workshops that we have that are not in, the, in such a good shape or um, about uh, these uh, results which are not so good on this particular, li particular line. But it's also uh, about the resources that we have in terms of um, traceability, documentation, uh, for instance. Some years ago, I would have said that uh, the most important thing in traceability uh, is that you are able to find uh, the right information. Today, I would say that you have to find the right information, but very quickly. So we need to uh, invest in uh, digital tools to uh, facilitate uh, retrieving information and also to take this burden from uh, people who during crisis uh, may be used for, to do something else and investigate more than uh, losing the time to retrieve the, the information. Another aspect of uh, culture is about the transparency. We've seen also uh, in some crises that the lack of transparency with the different stakeholders um, is uh, what makes uh, the issue bigger and, and sometimes is taken by, by the media um, and escalates into a crisis we, we have difficulty to control. Identify the, identify the stakeholders is key, but also interacting with them uh, and working with them on different scenarios, if we are talking about crisis management, but also informing them uh, when there are some food safety issues or questions. And that's this all over the year, not only, of course, when you have um, a crisis. Um, in terms of communication, which is very important, of course, uh, we see that uh, the focus, if you focus uh, towards the consumer, towards your employees, as some companies have done also during this um, current COVID uh, crisis, um, the, the, the situation for the companies is better and, and the people are, feel more confident and trust more this company. Enough of the general management for now. Let's talk about the food operators. For them, what's important is indeed that they adopt a good behavior, um, that they, of course, follow the rules of the companies. But uh, the most important thing is that it becomes something natural. And is it, it's often say that um, food safety culture is about doing things right, even when no one is, uh, is looking. And that's what it's all about. It's uh, working. Um, on a, a way of, of, of being, of behaving, uh, that it's natural for all. We all know that people uh, are eager to fit uh, with the others. So if, uh, in the case of our uh, general manager, manager before, they see bad examples, or if they see that people do not follow these rules which are written or do not understand them, they will naturally go uh, to uh, adopting the same behavior as their colleagues so that they can fit in, so they are part of, a, of, of the team. As quality and food safety manager, we also have, of course, a big role. In the last GFSI um, conference in February 2020, some CEOs said even that the, food, the, food, the quality and food safety manager are the most important persons in the food in a food company. So for us, what does it mean? Do we cultivate food safety culture? Do we work on it? Do, you do we think about it? Do we teach or do we more uh, keen on writing procedures and rules? This is a very important item. Of course, we all know that there are good manufacturing practices, that we have prerequisite, HAZAP systems, uh, food safety management system with policies, uh, indicators. Then we add a little bit of plan to check act. We can make it certified. If it's from a GFSI approved scheme, it's even better. Um, and that's, that's what, what we learn 
technic technically as a quality and food safety uh, manager. But what we need to understand is that without food safety culture, all of this can be for nothing. Without the proper food safety culture, uh, the whole pyramid can uh, can go down very quickly. And there is also an important aspect of it is that the why is more important than how. That people understand why they have to do something is much more important than how they have to do it. So, of course, procedures are important to give a framework. But if people do not understand why they are doing this, then the risk of, of not following the rules is even bigger. So as a quality manager, which kind of questions can we ask ourselves? Do we have the right skills? Do we know how to inspire others? Do we know how to communicate our passion for food safety or for quality? And also, do we know how to talk about risk with our general management? Uh, how all what we do is linked with what the company, company um, should avoid and that we're helping to reduce the risk for the company in order to uh, build a stronger uh, and reliable brands. Food safety culture is also about us, all of us. Uh, and what I mean is as a consumer, when we prepare food, uh, do we pay attention how we buy it, how we prepare it, that there is no cross-contamination at home? How kids, uh, do we teach them how to wash properly hands? Okay, I, I know that some of you uh, were a safety concern will say, oh, this is not at all a safety place for a kid. But let's imagine that there are a lot of, of, uh, of adult person around uh, this, uh, this little girl. What I wanted to illustrate is that it also starts by uh, education. We need to educate children and also probably at school about the importance of food safety. So let's go to the wording food safety culture. There is of course in it culture. And what is culture? It's all these things that we do and that uh, help us to recognize um, when we are different countries, uh, some, some ways uh, that people uh, behave, um, some traditions they have. So they are, these are visible things. They can be considered as cliché, but uh, actually, if you have lived uh, in France, in Spain, in China, in Japan, uh, these are things that you will see. Um, yeah, you will see for, for those who were during the Gilets Jaunes uh, period in Paris, you, you, you saw the impact it has, but it also has to do with the character that we have. We are never happy as, uh, as French people and, and we like to, to protest. We also like white, like other countries. So culture is what you see. So you know probably or have seen this uh, iceberg principle with what you see, which is behavior, the food that people eat, the clothes that they wear, tradition, artistic uh, aspects of the civilization. And then there, are, there is all what is hi hidden, beliefs, standards, ideals, myths, taste, values. And this, of course, is influenced by external factors uh, from economy to education, the geography and climate also has, of course, a, a, an impact on how we, how we behave. So we can say that we are the result of our own identity, of the national culture that we are in, and of all the organizations that we go through during our life, the family, the school, the company, culture uh, influences us and makes us what we are. And this is important to take into account, especially, I would say, when we have multicultural uh, workforce uh, in a company, but also to understand why uh, in multicultural relations, people do not react as we um, expect them to react according to our own principles. In food safety culture, there is also food culture. And we see here uh, different aspects of food culture. 
um, which are uh, related to different products. I don't know which one for you is the most, let's say, risky one. Is it the cheese from Sardinia with the living worms on it? Is it uh, to eat scorpions, as it is done in, in some Asian countries? Is it to eat fugu from Japan, one of the most toxic, uh, uh, I would say, uh, food products in the world where you, you need specific qualification to be able to, to cut it? Or is it what uh, some uh, North French men do when they put their uh, stinky cheese in the coffee in the morning? Uh, what I want to illustrate there is that, in fact, the relation that we have with food has also an impact on the way we see risk uh, in the factory. And this is also something that we uh, need to take into account. Not all the people have the same approach to what is risky and not risky, what with what is a represent a hazard or not. It is linked to, to our, our um, food culture too. Let's come back to food safety culture and what we like, which is um, to work on uh, a bit the history of, sorry, the history of food safety culture. Food safety culture has a bit more than 10 years. Um, we can say that there were several publications. One of them in 2009 was uh, from Frank Yanas, uh, well known. Um, Frank Yanas was um, or has been um, quality director of uh, Walt Disney, of uh, Walmart, and he was chairman of the GFSI. Uh, and um, it's no, no, no wonder that in 2011 already uh, the, the, the topic of the Global Food Safety Conference of the GFSI was how to create a global food safety culture. During the years, there have been just several interesting publications from the FSA about how to uh, it's a toolkit for inspectors, which is still available um, in the internet. Uh, you have had a, a report of the Australian New Zealand authorities about the Fonterra case, which is very, very interesting. Also in how uh, the company, uh, after uh, an issue which was not an issue, a real food safety issue, but caused a lot of problems, uh, collaborated with the, with the authorities to, uh, to improve the food, uh, food safety culture. And uh, different books have been published. And of course, uh, in the last uh, couple of years, uh, there has been the publication of um, the position paper from the GFSI uh, about the culture of food safety after uh, some, uh, some years of, of work led by a lone yes person uh, with a group of uh, at least 30 people from, from different countries. Um, working on all the dimensions and what we need to improve. The New Zealand um, uh, authorities, uh, Australian New Zealand authorities, have published also um, food safety culture doc documents and questionnaires um, about to improve food safety culture. And uh, from to the end of 2018, we have seen uh, the BRC was included um, food safety culture as part uh, in their standards. They were part of the of the group of the GFSI, and so as they, they, they like to be front runners, they, they integrated it. In 2020, so it's in this year, uh, the last benchmarking document from the GFSI was published, and in it, uh, the, um, the requirement for the certification program owner was to um, integrate food safety culture uh, in, their, uh, in their standard. And from this year, uh, we have seen uh, at the end of the year the IFS, uh, SQF, and also FSC 22000 that are recently uh, published, new versions and with different aspects, including aspects of food safety uh, culture. What is the definition uh, of the GFSI? And oh, I added an, an element from Chris Griffith. Is Food safety culture are all these shared values, beliefs, and norms present, learned, because they can be learned, that affect the way of thinking and behavior in relation to food safety in, through, and throughout an organization. And um, importantly, what are these food safety culture elements that uh, the management systems should uh, include? 
they are, uh, but not limited to, communication, training, employee feedback, and measure of effectiveness. GFSI worked also uh, on um, dimension of food safety culture as part of this, um, this guidance. Uh, documents, I would say, and um, you, you can see different models. I, I have chosen to, to speak about two. Uh, the first one, of course, the one from the GFSI, where you see uh, all what is related to the vision and mission of the company, all what is to, uh, related to the, to the people, uh, the l learning, uh, training, the skills, um, the consistency between uh, how, what, we, what we say and what we do, uh, the resources uh, that, that we put in place, uh, the adaptability of the company, um, how we, we uh, manage change in the company, for instance, or how we react to uh, emergency um, situations. And uh, the basis of it, I would say, is the awareness and the knowledge uh, about hazards and, and risk um, in the company that uh, can be... Um, uh, transmitted to the to the employees and, and through all the companies, actually not only to the to the food operators, and the food management, the, for the food, food production management, but, but to, towards all the the departments of the company. Uh, there is an interesting uh, approach uh, taken from the uh, Camden BRI with the TSI, uh, which is uh, which I like because it's uh, very uh, synthetic. They they address it through a four dimension, all what is related to people, the responsibility, the training, communication, all what is related to processes, the processes that you need to control, the consistency, uh, the different systems that you can have, um, the purpose of the company, you, you find some, of course, some, and there are, I mean, all these models are very related, uh, vision, values, the objectives and indicators that you may have. And or how you are proactive uh, in the in the company, how you innovate, anticipate, uh, and also how you you invest, for instance. So, what are the requirements that that are emerging uh, from uh, all this uh, thinking, all this work, and the, that we can find in different uh, sets? I would say of standards and norms. I've chosen to start by the international standards and to show also that there, there has been a, a big private public uh, link and work on these issues. And although um, I would say the official uh, text came after all the, the what has been done in the private sector, um, it is today integrated, uh, for instance, in the Codex Alimentarius. You may know that there is, there has been, or there is a current provision of the general principles of food hygiene, and they have been adopted uh, in September, in the, the meetings of September and October 2020, so very recently. Um, and the Codex Alimentarium and these principles of food hygiene, they say that uh, the food business operators should build a positive food safety culture, demonstrating their commitment um, to provide the safe and suitable food with en encouragement of uh, appropriate food safety practices. And you also find uh, the elements, uh, which are very similar to, to what the GFSI uh, was mentioning, commitment, leadership, awareness, communication, and resources. Um, in Europe, uh, there is also the revision of the hygiene, uh, food hygiene regulation, uh, which is in, in progress. And uh, it is planned at, at this stage to have a, a chapter about food safety culture. And um, not surprisingly, you find the same elements as the codex there. Commitment, leadership, uh, awareness, open and clear communication uh, between all employees. And last but not least, in the official round of requirements and, and, and developments around the food safety culture, um, you have from the FDA, uh, led by no other than Frank Yanas, uh, this blueprint for the future of food safety uh, called the new era of smarter food safety. 
Uh, and it is interesting, in my opinion, for different reasons. The first one is that it is a very good and rare example of transparency and collaboration. Uh, I don't know of uh, any precedent of a, um, an, a food safety authority uh, displaying um, the plans for the future and uh, making a public consultation, international public consultation, it was open to everyone. Uh, in order to give the feedback about these uh, plans. And of course, what is important to, to note is that uh, one of the core elements of this um, future of food safety is uh, the food safety culture. And uh, with the objective to promote food safety culture at the same time through the food system, but also through the agency, training the different in inspectors um, concerned in, in terms of food safety. And also uh, an important aspect, which is to promote uh, smarter food safety consumer education. So the education uh, part is also uh, taken into account uh, by the FDA. And you can see that this uh, blueprint, well, of course, it's FISMA based because we are in the United States. But uh, more importantly, it is people focused. So it's all about people and led leadership and also technology enable, enabled. Uh, because we need to be uh, more quicker in the way we react uh, to, to the different crises that we are facing. If we go now to the go back to the private sector with the GFSI, but we have already um, discussed about, about it, and most of it you, you find what we already uh, showed. Um, indeed, in the February 2020 um, benchmarking guideline documents they say that the, the, the certification program owners have to include um, in the management commitment uh, requirements uh, something about the evidence that they that the management commitment establishes implement improves the food safety management system that was already uh, in the original text but that this should include elements of food safety culture this is the new part such as communication, training, feedback from employees, measurement on food safety related activities. The aspect of measurement is uh, important uh, when we talk about uh, having uh, policy objectives. That's something that, of course, that, that, we, that we know. Now let's take a look at what the um, certification program owners uh, have done. DRC, um, oh, it's, uh, it, it is a consistent, it's about senior management commitment. Um, the particular approach of BRC is that uh, they highlight to the, the need to define and maintain a plan for the development and continuing improvement of food safety culture, where you can find defined activities, the action plan, and the review of the effectiveness. So the, for the BRC, it all goes through a plan which is visible and which is easier to uh, audit than the hidden uh, aspects of food safety culture. And uh, interesting is indeed that they have integrated this need to report any evidence of food safety or out of specification products by the employees to uh, the designated management. So the feedback about uh, issues is, is uh, mentioned. For IFS, it's all about governments and commitment. So it is about the corporate policy, which um, should include, of course, food safety culture. Uh, it is about um, a policy which is communicated and broken down into specific objectives. So that includes, of course, the aspects of uh, related to food safety. And um, there is um, a management review, uh, as, as in other standards, where uh, there should be, as a minimum, a review uh, from part of, of, the, of the requirements that you have a review of objective and policies that include those related to food safety culture. So there is, there is consistency, there are different approaches. Uh, IFS considering that part of the standards was already um, taking into account uh, food safety culture and that there is even a KO about uh, the, the knowledge from the senior management about the awareness uh, of the people uh, and their roles and responsibility in terms of quality and, and food safety. SQF, again, management commitment. So there is a, a consistency, thank God, 
across all the GFSI uh, benchmarked um, uh, schemes. Uh, SQF has um, an approach about management commitment, uh, where it talks also about policy statement, about maintaining a food safety culture within the site, and uh, also to support this through uh, food safety objectives, performance, resources, food safety practices, the fact that employees should be should uh, know that they are accountable uh, for, for what happens and with positive notification of uh, actual and potential food safety issues. It's uh, interesting. And they also add the empowerment part. So the employee should be empowered to act rapidly uh, to, to prevent uh, food safety issues. Last but not least, uh, FSSC 2000, uh, they have a very... Um, particular approach uh, because uh, as I uh, have, have seen um, FSC 22000 hasn't changed uh, its, its standard uh, considering that all is in ISO 22000 uh, and in different uh, documents uh, related to it so what's uh, the approach from FSC 22000 is to uh, focus on the auditor with uh, a guidance for the, the audit how uh, food safety culture should be audited and the types of questions that the auditor can ask uh, to the company referring uh, very strongly to um, the questions that are in the in the GFSI uh, gui food safety culture guidance document so that's an interesting approach um, anyway uh, what all the standards say is that, uh, of course, elements that are related to food safety culture are not the only one that you can see where, where food safety culture is directly mentioned. We, we talk about policy and objective management review, the responsibilities, uh, the, the resources are related to food safety culture. Of course, all the aspects about hygiene rules, prerequisite programs, if you, if you wish. Uh, all what is related to risk analysis and HAZAP, it can be food fraud, food defense, uh, of course, uh, HAZAP, uh, training, um, and also uh, corrective action and, and other that are mentioned by the, by the different uh, standards. So once we said this, um, what can we do and which kind of uh, improvement action can, can, we, can we start as a, as a food company? There is, of course, one element um, and that is mentioned is that, and as we know that there is no progress with the measure, measurement is key. Uh, here, what I would like to say is that uh, none of the standards requires the measurement about food safety culture. You have to measure the effectiveness of the actions that you have and uh, about the performance of the, the company in regards to the objectives you have uh, in terms of food safety, and in some cases, food safety culture improvement. But of course, uh, there are some, some ways or some tools um, that are interesting uh, to uh, try to evaluate or to evaluate uh, the food safety culture of the company or the level of maturity uh, that, uh, that you have in the company. The question is, do I have food safety culture in my company? Of course. Every, every company has a culture, a company culture, and every food company has a food safety culture. The problem is which one and at which level uh, you are. Um, I've chosen to, to present you two, two aspects of, of this uh, maturity or um, um, level uh, assessment. One, again, from the food standards of Australia and New Zealand, uh, they have uh, disclosed, and it's still also publicly available, uh, kind of questionnaires that you can um, use to, um, uh, to address uh, this, uh, the, this, uh, this question about food safety culture and uh, about the leadership, so how important uh, the employee think that food safety uh, is for the business in relation or compared to profits or the brand. 
Uh, is it known who is responsible for making sure the food is that the food is safe? Is it everyone in the company, or is, or is it me, or is it uh, the quality manager? And what is the commitment of all the managers uh, to food safety? There are questions about the workplace. What's the situation? Are they? Are, uh, is it possible to? to suggest improvements, um, how food safety problems or complaints are addressed, uh, then how the, what is related to staff knowledge and actions, how much training of food safety is available, for instance, or is it, are there awareness um, uh, on food safety in the daily job every time? Is it something that is, is talked about um, in a consistent and, and permanent way? Uh, is data collected and assessed, and how how do, is it used uh, to make improvements? And there is one interesting aspect, of course, is the relationship uh, with regulators. So, what's the business relationship, the, the relationship that the business has with the food regulator or with uh, with auditors? Um, so, these are questions that you can ask yourself as as a management team um, to to try to assess it. But of course, uh, one important aspect is uh, what is the perception that the employee has. And uh, as example, I've uh, chosen to talk about you about this uh, culture excellence program from Kamsin BRI with uh, with uh, TSI and Dr. Joanne uh, Taylor um, that have, uh, came through uh, this uh, uh, very broad questioning, but not a, a very long one, but that allows to go deep in the organization. Uh, in, I would say, a, a quite a light way and to reach uh, most deeply uh, the perception of every employee of the company. What is very interesting in this tool is uh, the ability to benchmark. So because of the thousands of, of company already, uh, of plants registered and the hundreds of thousands of, of um, uh, different actors of the, of the food businesses, uh, that have answered this uh, food safety culture questionnaire, you are able to to compare yourself yourself with um, companies of your own country or of your own sector, and uh, then the the, the team uh, of um, of TSI helps you uh, once the, the assessment is done uh, in identifying the the the, the actions uh, planned and and also uh, of course to to see what is the the awareness so you can measure the awareness of the all the different employees that you can sort by by categories and so on uh, on the um, risk of the company what is the most important thing for for them so that's interesting a very interesting tool in, in my opinion what can we do more uh, for um, for the leadership, it's about mission, communication, and training. We talked about the leadership. Uh, I hear a, a bigger picture uh, about uh, the, the general manager of, of uh, Belle France uh, at that time, uh, Jennifer Marquet, and I, I, I show her face because she authorized me to do it as a, as a former colleague. And of course, is leading by example. Uh, in this case, you have all what uh, somebody should have, not only food safety related, but also safety related with the protections of, for the ear, the eyes, uh, and, and, the, and the correct dressing. So giving the example is key uh, for the management. Of course, uh, you have other ways uh, to show how important food safety is um, for the general management and that you can find in a different uh, uh, reports, annual reports, CSR reports uh, of the of the companies. If you look through them, um, often food safety is not even mentioned. So it's uh, some more and more big companies are doing it, but uh, sometimes it's so, so basic that it's not even mentioned as, as something to, to do. In terms of training. Uh, yeah, we should not. We should go a bit away from this uh, two or three hours training that are boring for for everyone. That's why uh, this uh, this webinar is only forty five minutes, so I, I should finish uh, soon. And uh, try to reinvent it. So, how can I do uh, trainings that are more impactful uh, using um, uh, modern uh, tools, tablets, or, or, or phones? Which are more adapted to the generations of the of the food workers now. 
Uh, here is an example from a company, Barikeyo Kaibo, which was uh, communicated about, for instance, doing an escape game about uh, HAZAP. So these are uh, different initiatives, how you make food safety uh, funnier using gamification, uh, which helps for, for learning. In terms of communication, there is, of course, internal communication. Here are some examples from companies which were um, given in the different uh, GFSI uh, summits. Uh, is it about uh, having your um, uh, your food safety uh, most important items communicated with the company during food safety events, um, and also having uh, a clear communication uh, about the quality uh, culture and program of the company, which is available for for everyone. In summary, what makes um, food safety culture uh, progress and improve. It's a truly, 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 truly committed leadership, leading by example. Don't forget, walk the talk. Uh, the level of measurement uh, of the perception of food safety by all is, um, is a big help, uh, I think. Uh, but again, not a mandatory requirement for for food safety uh, standards. Food safety should be a priority with clear and shared goals of improvement discussed at different levels of the company. Communication should be stimulated. Training reviewed to be most, the most e effective and impactful. And it's also uh, transparency with stakeholders, customers, control bodies. And at the end, you have uh, the conditions of your company or your plant which is always the same and an announced audit uh, surprise visit and inspection are never an issue so that also uh, bridges to how an announced audit can also be uh, a way uh, for quality managers to learn how to delegate some responsibilities and to uh, work together with the different uh, teams in order to guarantee uh, the success of uh, any uh, of these audits so uh, this is the end of this um, webinar. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. I will take, I will look at some questions that you may have. And um, well, if you want to know more, uh, you have my contact uh, details. And uh, of course, we offer some uh, trainings on food safety culture, uh, on crisis management, uh, food fraud, and also, uh, of course, as IFS Academy about the different versions of IFS. Um, food or IFS broker and the other standards. So let's see uh, now which uh, question you may have on it. I will go through if you have questions. Yeah. So can we measure the food safety culture of the company, uh, Daisuke? Uh, well. It, if, if you want to measure the food safety culture, then you have to take the, the tools such as the ones that we uh, that I showed from Culture Excellence. There are, there are others, but it's it's one of the of the best one. But we are not obliged from the the different uh, standard owners. Hello. Um, what other? Should safety culture co come from general management employees or both from, from everyone, for sure. But uh, it starts uh, at the top and then uh, through all the, all the company. How much amount of time is needed for one to implement a fully functional food safety culture? That's a, um, a very good question. Uh, it's difficult to answer. It really depends on the, the how, where you start. Um, but I, I would say that it takes, um, if you want to do uh, address it correctly, uh, first measure it, measure it, uh, and then implement some measure. Uh, it takes uh, several months uh, for sure. And for me, it's a it's a good project to uh, to take into account when you are when there are standard revision, and that even if it's not uh, the main objective, uh, as we said, um, it's something to to definitely uh, take into account when you upgrade your, your food safety management system because the standards are, 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 have evolved and, and we have the, the recent examples of uh, IFS uh, 
um, SQF and FSSC 22000. Thank you for your nice words. All right. So I will I will pick up the um, the different questions that you that you post, and uh, I will answer them uh, in the in the LinkedIn for those who were from uh, from LinkedIn and uh, in uh, in YouTube. So. Uh, once again, thank you very much. And uh, I would say um, bye, bye to all of you. Thank you for attending. And thank you for your, for your questions and all the best. And for someone who, um, who arrived very late, uh, don't worry, uh, this will be, uh, this will be um, uh, on, uh, on replay uh, in YouTube and, uh, and in LinkedIn for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Faisal, your note. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Titi. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Ibtisam. People I know and people I don't know. All right. Then this is the end, my friends. And uh, let's meet for a next uh, webinar. I will post uh, also the... Um, uh, the different um, topics that we will address uh, next uh, next time. Bye to everyone.